the stories that shaped us in 2010. Those early pictures emerging from Haiti after the earthquake, the race to get medical supplies and food into the people who needed it. The Chilean mine disaster, and then the unthinkable, the rescue of each miner one by one. And of course, there were the voters in this country who headed out for the midterms and their voices were heard, changing the face of Congress. There has been a huge earthquake, magnitude 7.0, just off the coast of Haiti. We are told that some 50 tons of relief is still waiting up in the air and outside of the country. The presidential palace, which once looked like this, is now destroyed. Not enough medicine, not enough doctors or nurses. Doctors who are here have had to scavenge for saws for operations, sometimes sterilizing them with vodka and rum. It's a gruesome scene along this highway. You can see that... They're, they're hand digging the graves here using a pick to bury their loved ones. What are you doing for water, I ask? There's nothing to drink. They waved for help. What would you say, Mr. President, to the people who waved to us from the ground today? All I know is they're doing better today than they did yesterday, and they're going to do better tomorrow. That geyser of oil spewing into the Gulf of Mexico is so much bigger than anyone thought. What looks like thin ribbons of oil from the surface of the water is so much more disturbing underneath. I was calling to check on my claim. Duddy and Diane Poche now have to take food from the church charity. I have never taken food stamps in my life. There's no one who wants this thing over more than I do. You know, I'd like my life back. Another flock of birds coming ashore in the Gulf. It's been trying to hobble around and flap its wings. It clearly can't do that. Back at the effort tonight to build that wall, protecting the barrier islands from the oil that's out further. You can see them dropping another bag here now. The oil well in the Gulf has been killed by tons of mud. 107 days after the gushing oil leak started. Ever in the middle of all this coming at you think maybe one term is enough? I'd rather be a really good one-term president than a mediocre two-term president. Today, health insurance reform becomes law in the United States of America. I, I'm exhausted of defending you, defending your administration, right. defending the mantle of change that I voted for. Meet the Tea Partiers. Here in Alaska, I always think of the mama grizzly bears. I'm not a witch. The tea parties across America are going to have a great deal to say about who is in office. That thunderous shift in the House of Representatives, more than 60 seats. I'm not recommending for every future president that they take a shellacking like, they, like I did last night. I believe that we are on the way to convincing the Afghan people that uh, we are here to protect them. Today I accepted General Stanley McChrystal's resignation. Those disparaging remarks McChrystal and his aides made about the president and key members of his national security team in Rolling Stone magazine. President Obama is declaring the official end of Operation Iraqi Freedom. Do you feel like the war is over? We're still here. We've still got a job to do. A group online called WikiLeaks, along with three major newspapers, has published 92,000 classified intelligence documents. I'm a combative person, so I like crushing bastards. 500 million users on Facebook this week. There's this incredible movement on the internet towards people being empowered to share what they want. A chorus of voices grew so loud on Facebook, they got Betty White to host Saturday Night Live. I didn't know what Facebook was. <laughs> and now that I do know what it is, it sounds like a huge waste of time. We think we got the goods. It's part laptop, part movie theater, game room, bookstore, and photo album. A mine disaster in West Virginia. We are live tonight because just down the road from here is the site of the worst mine disaster in this country in 26 years. So you lost three people in the mine? Mm -hmm. Yes, at one time. That miracle in the mine so many were praying for did not come in West Virginia. We're learning of an amazing story of survival from Chile tonight. 33 miners trapped thousands of feet underground for 17 days are in fact alive. A camera set thousands of feet underground. 
mine has produced copper, a little bit of gold, but today it produced men. All day long, billions of people all around the earth have been watching a celebration as one by one, a group of ordinary men, Chilean miners, remind the world of the joy of fresh air, sunlight, life, family, and tomorrow. How could we ever forget those hugs, the families waiting for their miners to arrive one by one?